Okay, welcome back for episode four of planning for the making of a race car. So, we're going to be talking about the roll cage. And this is where it's going to get kind of a little bit on the sketchy side because there's so many different ways that you can approach a roll cage, different multi points. You can just have the roll bar with the extra supports out the back. Some places have, people have the uh, hoop with the two out the back and the two forward. And then other ones go for the full cage. Some go for a bolt-in style. Others are weld-in. Some try to go around the dash. Some through the dash. Some people try to piece it together using scrap they have laying around. Or try to re-make the wheel or something. So, this one here, uh, basically, since I mentioned in one of the other videos that I took the Tiburon out to an open road race, had a hell of a lot of fun uh, cruising down a closed highway at 120, and I was pretty much limited at 120, and they'd kick me out if I went past it because I didn't have enough safety equipment to go to the next class. And I didn't want to tear up the Tiburon, which is my daily driver. Didn't want to tear that up just trying to put in a cage and harness bars and all that type of stuff. So that's kind of what brought us to making the crossfire. Anyways, first stop in doing your roll cage. That's not going to be going out buying metal or buying a tubing bender or studying cage design, you're going to want to get the rule book for what you are going to race in. That is going to be your essentially your Bible to making that roll cage. Without it, you'll be second guessed every uh, inspection whether it's going to pass or not, and there's a lot of valuable information in those rule books. Of course, if you just want a roll cage for the looks, and you're heading to the drag strip and you're not even doing 11 second quarter miles, then knock yourself out. You can uh, put in whatever black pipe roll cage you want. It doesn't need to pass anything. You can even put in a PVC pipe uh, roll cage for all that matters. But when you start getting into the safety inspections and teching into certain classes, you're going to want to have the backup of the rule book. Essentially looking around at a lot of the rule books, like we're talking about uh, NHRA, SCCA, all those major uh, rule makers, some of the common things that you pick up is depending on the weight of your vehicle, you need different sized tubings. Like for up to 3,000 pounds, most of the rule books say that minimum is a one and a half inch 95 wall tube. Some, some uh, sanctioning bodies will actually require DOM. Some still allow the resistance welded with a seam in the middle. But from the looks of things, it's kind of leaning more towards seeing the resistance welded going away and going with a seamless DOM. You're probably not going to want to make the expenditure for doing a chromoly cage because that requires TIG welding and heat treating. And it's just a whole lot of disaster for not enough payback unless you're into major racing classes like NASCAR and that type of stuff. And if you're doing that, what are you doing watching my site? <laughs> Anyways, um, another thing to keep in mind is a lot of the sanctioning bodies even have a radius requirement. A lot of times it's three times the diameter of the tube. 
So that means that uh, as you have your tube and it bends, you can, they want it to be a little more of a gentle bend instead of just a kink in it. Because what, uh, what it does is if you bend it too much too fast, you can either kink the pipe or cause the top of the tube to kind of squish down. And then it actually reduces wall thickness and you'll never pass tech inspection there either. So essentially since the crossfire is right at that 3,000 pound we can probably lighten it up and make it under it so then we'd only need the inch and a half 95 wall but I kind of don't necessarily want to bank on that so I'm kind of feeling like going overkill uh, if I do inch and three quarter 120 wall there's no doubt in my mind that we will tech out no matter where we're at that should be good for about a 4,000 pound car doing whatever the heck we want to we're probably going to take a penalty of I think I looked up online for the weight per foot we're really only going to take a penalty of maybe 60 70 pounds going to that bigger pipe for the whole cage so even if it's 100 150 we can find other places to lighten that up and go with the confidence that we have enough thickness of pipe for any future rule changes because you never know somebody might die in a car accident at one of those places and they decide hey we need thicker tubes on everything and your SOL and you'd have to cut out your old cage and put in a new one so rule on the side of overkill okay since we're not going to worry about uh, competitive racing uh, and the weight penalty that's not even going to be a factor at all because of that we're going to have a lot of weight on the front just with a different engine since it'll be the iron block and we'll have to figure out lightning uh, different things maybe with carbon fiber or something like that but we're on the business of roll cage I classify them in two different styles one's going to be the halo cage which is what we're displaying here where it has the top bar that goes around the roof from the main hoop and then your a pillar bars will come from that section down usually you'd want them at the furthest forward so I don't even know what this guy was doing so that's the halo style so then let's jump ahead to this Porsche Porsche this is actually like a, one of those bolt-in, but it gives you the same concept of this one here has the whole pillar section coming down on the uh, A-pillar section. Instead of having the one halo bar, it's got this coming down, and then it's got straight sections straight across. All right, here's a good... Uh, example. So you can see you got the uh, cage bar coming up straight up to the hoop and then up here it crosses over with just a single piece then you got this style of door bar where this other one was kind of the NASCAR style so Essentially, I kind of am more partial to this second style where the bar comes up and follows the lines of the car. It kind of looks a little more like it belongs in there where the other one looks like it's just a bunch of pipe that you just kind of crammed in there. It also kind of greatly depends on who's making the cage, whether it fits and looks nicely. You can tell that this uh, 
red car was definitely a kind of more DIY style and this one here was obviously a professional build. I'm thinking I'm kind of going to copy some of this one. I also kind of want to take a piece from this style where you have this extra little pillar support it doesn't block your view because you got your mirror piece but if we add that section onto this car so we'd have an extra little pillar coming down catching into this node here and just triangulating that it looks like a good place to strengthen up a adding a little extra gusset and so on and so forth we're probably also going to do these uh, eight pillar brackets and then weld it directly to the car and I definitely like this style of doing the X bars but it's probably this one here looks a little little off I think for a lot of uh, sanctioning bodies you're going to need those little taco supports that would be flip through them that'd be like these guys a lot of places like seeing this reinforcement on door bars it's like you could go with the super NASCAR but uh, I don't think we need that since we're not going to be doing very much for door-to-door -door racing so we wouldn't have to worry about a car coming through our driver's side door no figure eight racing wow this one's got a lot of gusset work a lot of things going on but it just doesn't like this door bar looks a little too tight of a turn it just just doesn't quite look like just a whole lot of stuff going on it's like then you have these guys most sanctioning places aren't even going to consider this anything there's too many corners too many bends some of the rule books even even state what bends you're allowed to have in your main hoop and your uprights a lot of times you can't exceed more than like five bends in a set distance um, other sanctioning places aren't going to like this style because the door bars are so low granted it makes it a lot easier for ingress egress getting in and out but some sanctioning bodies say that you need to have a set spot where this bar intersects across so it's essentially all a whole bunch of stuff that you need to think about if you're doing a lot of door-to-door -door racing in a actual racing series you will definitely want to look into the more NASCAR style door bars and gut your glass gut your doors like this one here so you gotta cut a hole in there so this whole little cage fits inside the door but we're gonna want to stick with having glass so we don't want to, the whole window net and that type of stuff. I kind of want to keep the glass, keep it kind of a road legal race car, I guess. <laughs> That's kind of our game plan. It's going to be a cross between this cage that they got going together on this uh, Cayman. You can see all the good little sections. I kind of want to get a dash bar in mine just for that extra safety feature never know if you're gonna roll it so we'll have to remove the dash and figure that out 
This is just pretty much a rough idea of what we're going to do. Let's see, so a cross between that Kingman and this guy. It'll give us a rough concept of what we're going to do, and we'll actually figure out what we're going to finally do once we actually get into the car and gut it out and see what we have to work with, because that will greatly influence how your bars run based on where you can actually mount them and put them and keep them under dashes and the curvature of the pillars and all that type of stuff. So, yeah, that's pretty much the game plan for the cage. We'll do the whole probably six-point harness and the works. Depending on how hard it is to get in and out, we might even need to have one of those uh, quick-release steering wheels. But we'll worry about that when we get there. This is just our rough planning. So that's it for the roll cage episode. Next time we're going to be talking about uh, your different choices for ECU and fueling and that type of stuff. So be sure to come back and check that out. Later.